A few months ago, I made a video regarding doubling your FPS using a software named Lossless Scaling. The way I doubled my FPS was simply by using the application's upscaling, which it doesn't technically double your FPS, but it mostly increases your FPS, which is still good. Now on that video, I got a comment mentioning that I missed its coolest ability, which is frame generation. And to be honest, I shrugged it off. <laughs> until I see that they released LSFG 3.0, which actually doubles your FPS, but not just doubles, it can triple, quadruple, or even vision tuple your FPS. Now for the people who are new to loss of scaling, you can watch my other video introducing it, but for the people who don't know what frame generation is, it basically inserts a fake frame in between two real ones, making your game look and feel more smooth. Now just recently, multi frame gen was added to this software and to the new 50 series GPUs. This basically allows you to add as many fake frames in between the real ones as you want. Now enough with the talking, let me show you how cool this is. Now of course, First, before we start, I do need to tell you the requirements, which are pretty straightforward. All you need is the ability to achieve at least 30 FPS in the game of your choice. Anything under 30 in your eyes might melt. Other than that, you will need to pay $7 if you don't want to sell the seas, but that's it. Now over at Lossless Killing, you will see that there is frame generation. Now that has always been there, but if you click on it, you'll see that it has LSFG 3.0. Clicking that will give you a mode which will say times two, times three, times four, or even custom. Now, the reason why this is so cool is because normally with frame generation, it will only double your FPS. So if you're at 30 FPS, it'll get you to 60, or it will just go as high as it can until it reaches your refresh rate. With this new frame generation, it will actually allow you to times two, times three, or even times four, or go pretty much as high as you want. Anything higher than times four and you will definitely start seeing a few issues. To be honest, if you're at 30 FPS, having this on with a little bit of artifacting or times four artifacting will look a lot better than just native 30 FPS where it looks like a stuttery mess. But now we can go ahead and move on to the actual gameplay. Okay, now over in Stalker 2, which is the game we'll be testing this in, you can see that I am at 30 FPS and I am also recording in OBS at 60 FPS. So you can visually see that right now I'm at 30 FPS locked with all of these settings set to about medium and this does not feel or look good. Now, in a few seconds, I'm going to enable lossless scaling and you will see the difference between before and after enabling lossless scaling and see how great this is. But keep in mind that this is only times two, so you can get even higher FPS and hopefully you can actually see a little bit of the artifacting that may happen. Like, I really can't notice it. I You can notice it a little bit more at times four, but it is still in insane how good this is for seven dollars and you don't need a 300 dollars gpu to even get this to work you can see in the top left corner that i'm at 30 fps and the frame generation is doubling it to 60 fps and you can see that the crosshair might be artifacting for you guys but i can see a little bit of artifacting on my end but you can see that visually this feels way better and honestly physically this feels way better also so the latency isn't nearly as bad as if you were trying to force the frame generation from within the game or you're just trying to play at 30 fps the stutter is gone it's honestly amazing now i can try to crank this up to 120 fps but again you guys won't be able to see that but i want to see if i can show you guys the warping that happens when you're at 124 fps so let's see if i can get that to work okay now this is currently 30 to 120 fps now i'm not sure why it's not getting all the way to 120 it's kind of fluctuating a little bit i think that might be because of me recording through obs but you can still see that even at 120 fps the input latency isn't horrible but you can definitely see a lot more warping now i'm not sure if you guys can see it on your end but on my end it is pretty interesting so i would say that if you are getting 30 fps already in your game 
then lock the game to 30 fps and then do a times two frame generation or maybe even times three and see how good it is for you but maybe times four might work good for you at least on my end the times four is just honestly really bad with the warping i know that in the future they will definitely fix the artifacting or the warping that you can visually see on the screen but to be honest the fact that you can take 30 fps and turn it into 120 fps and make it feel as smooth as 120 fps is honestly insane but yeah that's pretty much it